Welcome, my killer clowns. We only have the final two Treehouse episodes left, both airing last year in 2022. The Simpsons did something fun. They gave us a traditional Treehouse with segments. But right before that, they gave us today's episode, a full runtime parody of Stephen King's It. Let's take a look at Not It. We opened 27 years ago. A young Barney goes out to play in the rain. He meets someone in the sewers who is very hungry. He never comes back home. We follow Homer through a Springfield turned into Maine as he hangs up missing posters of his friend. There's little room for it with all the other missing posters. And then he's ambushed by bullies while Krusty watches, barely managing to get away. He only does with the help of some new friends. They take him to their clubhouse, where Homer tells them about the clown. Everyone's seen him, in fact, being tortured by strange happenings and images. I love the sexy alien clown here. What a treat. They do research at the library, where Homer takes time to write a poem for Marge that he slips in her bag. It turns out the clown has always been here, having his own TV show, a radio show, even being part of a freak show. He comes back every 27 years, and he comes through the TV ready to gorge. But he gets stuck. He's about to eat comic book guy, but Homer stabs his waddle and Marge unplugs the TV. They're pretty shaken up. Calm down! Well, that's my fetish now. But Marge points out, he can be hurt. He can be killed. The group heads to the abandoned studio where his show was filmed. They attack. A whimsical weapons! They're useless! It looks like they're boned until Crusto accidentally does a vaudeville act on himself, and the kids laugh. Overcome with the sound, he can't help but try to keep them laughing, beating the shit out of himself in a moment of gorgeously smooth animation, until he's subdued and has to crawl away. For now. A pact is made to return in 27 years to stop the clown again. Marge kisses comic book guy, thinking he wrote the poem. Fast forward 27 years. New missing posters are up on the fence right next to a new bakery called You're All Gonna Pie. A delicious pun. A group of kids get pied to death and eaten. Then cut to Doze, a bar run by Homer, who stayed back in Kingfield. He's miserable, but sees the murders on TV and knows it's time to get the gang back together. Mo became a rock star with a singing ventriloquist dummy. And not gonna lie, I would legitimately watch this live. Carl gives up going to space to head back home. Meanwhile, comic book guy and Marge are married. She has her own heart seltzer business, she wants to go back, but is hesitant. She has kids, and it's delightful to see the personality swap. Besides, comic book guy flat out refuses to let her go, and won't go himself. We're adults now. A kid murderer is a kid problem. Marge leaves anyway, in secret. Comic book guy has to follow, deciding it's a good idea to bring their kids along to a town where a child murderer is about. Yeah, they get nabbed by Cresto, who sends them a video call to lure them to his lair. They're faced with their adult fears and anxieties, including comic book guy's secret. Crystal reveals the truth for all to see. I tried to tell you, just not very hard. The kids realize the sign needs to be destroyed to stop him, and Marge tosses a rock. After comic book guy sacrifices himself, Crystal is defeated. As hilarious as it is unnerving. Marge and Homer end up together. Happy ending. Then Kang and Kodos pop up to drop more Stephen King titles. What a fantastic episode! And this is what I mean when I say so many segments just need more time to develop. Time was used great here. There's so many good gags and jokes. Admittedly, in places it did drag a little. But overall, it's a solid good time. Crystal was a delight through and through. And this is something I do suggest seeking out. That Simpson spark is present here and makes me really feel like they're trying again with these Halloween specials. One could make the argument that it's just another parody and after more than 30 episodes chock full of those, it does get tiring. But they really used the source material well here. It wasn't like, say, the Stranger Things segment where it was just seven minutes crammed full of specific references with no substance. And this is what the treehouses have needed. I'm so glad they branched out of the normal formula. And honestly, props to them for daring to give us two Halloween specials in one year. Again, I do think you should check this out. 
and check out the next video where we'll finally end this Treater Terror Marathon. Thanks for joining my lucid screaming.